something I saw when I was uh, on the internet one day, um, actually yesterday, I saw a problem, and it was actually kind of fun because it related to Angry Birds, you know, that game you have on your iPhone or your iPad or even your Android phone or whatever. Kind of interesting. It's a projectile motion problem, and it says, in the popular game Angry Birds, in order to make sure the red bird can hit the green pig, what should the launch angle be with respect to, to the horizontal of the slingshot if the time of flight is two and a half seconds? So I kind of drew a really crude sketch here. Um, right here, this is the bird, the red bird. And if you know from the game, you can't really do much about it with it. You just pull back on the slingshot and hope for the best. It's at, at an initial height of 10 meters from the ground. And 55 meters away is the pig on a platform 12 meters high. And the question is asking, what should the launch angle be, this launch angle theta be, with respect to the horizontal? What should that theta be, given that the bird is in the air for two and a half seconds? And you may not think, well, I don't have enough information for this problem, but you actually do, kind of. You have enough, just get it started. So, you have an angle theta, and you're going to launch this bird at an initial velocity v sub i, and I wrote it as a vector because it has magnitude and direction, and we're actually trying to find its direction. You also know, I've written down here, that the time of flight is two and a half seconds, so at 2.5 seconds later, this bird is going to hit the pig, and you're going to get 5,000 points. You also know that the change in y, this delta y, is 2 meters. You're starting to 10 meters high, and you're going to end 12 meters high, and that's a delta y of 2. Your delta x is 55. You're changing 50, going 55 meters in, in the horizontal direction. And we're going to assume that we're on Earth, and that the uh, acceleration due to gravity, which is g, which is a vector, is 9.81 meters per second squared. So I guess we can now have enough information to get started on this problem. I'll put this on another board I have. And I'll rewrite the information that we have. We know that t is equal to 2.50 seconds. Delta y, which is the horizontal, which is the vertical change of direction, is 2 meters. Delta x is 55 meters. And g the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. So we have enough to get started, and I have some formulas here that we can use to get started. So if you saw, I broke down the vector v sub i into its horizontal and vertical components. We have a horizontal component v sub i x and a vertical v sub i y. And you should know that, you should know that the horizontal component is equal to v sub i times the cosine of theta and its vertical v sub i y is equal to v sub i times the sine of theta. So now we can get started here. We're trying to find out first, we're trying to find out theta. So I'll draw that again. Here's where the bird is being launched. It's just a point. That's my initial velocity, v sub i. And this is its horizontal component, v sub i x, which I'll write down, v sub i times the cosine of theta. And its horizontal component, Which is v sub i y I'll call that and that's v sub i times the sine times the sine of theta and we're trying to find this theta right here and I think we should find we should be able to find the horizontal and vertical components of this initial velocity in order to find out whatever this theta is so, when I first solved this problem, I started off with trying to find the vertical uh, velocity, which I call v sub i y. 
We're trying to find its magnitude. And the formula for that would be delta y, the vertical change, plus one half times the acceleration due to gravity times the time squared over time. And we have some of this information right here. We have a delta y, a g, and a t, so we can use all this to solve for v sub i y. So the magnitude of v sub i y is equal to delta y, which is 2 meters, plus 1 half times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. I'm going to ignore units for now, times 2.5 squared, that's the time squared, and over time, 2.5. So if I just plug this into my calculator, well first I'll get 2 plus 4.9, 4.9 I'll just leave that for simplicity, 4.9. Well, it's 4.905 times 2.5 squared over 2.5. And now we can just plug that into a calculator. So we have 2... We have 2 plus 1 half times acceleration due to gravity times 9.81 times 2.5 squared over 2.5. And we get, I'll oh, just write it right here, we get 13.0625. Meters per second, and that's the comp and that's the magnitude of the vertical velocity. <laughs> so we have that. I'll write it down here. V sub i y. Its magnitude is equal to thirteen point zero six two five meters per second. And now we can continue. Now we can continue. Uh, I'll leave that there for now. We can continue to solve for uh, v sub i x. And a formula I have here is delta x is equal to v sub i x times time. And now we can plug in what we know. Time is 2.50 seconds. Delta x is 55 meters. 55 is equal to v sub i x times 2.5. Now we can just divide both sides by 2.5, and we'll get v sub i x, the magnitude of that, I should just put that there, is equal to, back to the calculator, 55 divided by 2.5 is equal to 22, 22 meters per second squared, excuse me, 22 meters per second. Now we can just write that down. V sub i x, the magnitude of that, is equal to 22 meters per second. Meters per second. And now, if you recall from our diagram, I'll draw it again here. We have a y, v sub i y, which is 13.0625 meters per second. And we have an x, which is 22 meters per second squared. Excuse me, meters per second. I don't know why I keep saying meters per second squared. And we're trying to find some theta. We're trying to find some theta. Well, if you know from your trigonometry, you can um, use the tangent function, actually. So the tangent of theta... It's equal to, well, it's the opposite, already adjacent, 13.0625 over 22. And so the tangent of theta is going to be equal to this quotient. So, let's see, 13.0625 divided by 22. And by the way, I'm using a TI-89 titanium, in case, in case you're curious. And that is equal to 0 
375. Now we're almost done. Now we just got to take the inverse tangent of both sides. So I'll just write that operator down. The inverse tangent, or arctan, if you will. Inverse tangent of the tangent of theta, that'll just be theta, is equal to the inverse tangent of whatever we got up here, 0 0.59. 375 and theta to two decimal places is approximately equal to I'll use the inverse tangent operator here we got 30.6997 so I'll just say 30.70 it's about 30.70 degrees so in order for that red bird to hit that green pig this data has to be 30.07, 30.70 degrees.